How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be reviewing the Hot Toys Daredevil figure from the Netflix series. Now I have to say, wow, this figure really is awesome. It's such a rare figure. I don't know if they'll ever make this figure again unless they keep the same costume design from the series on the, when they're doing the new series. I mean, I hear they're probably going to do another Daredevil series and Daredevil is supposed to make more appearances in the MCU. So who knows, maybe they'll reissue this. You know, I don't know, knowing Disney and Marvel, they might change the costume design. Who knows so but the important thing is i think this figure by itself is just amazing i mean look at the the box first right off the bat the braille on the front is actually raised it's actually real braille so that's really cool i don't know what it says uh let me know in the comments below but i'm assuming it probably says daredevil or something like that but this is awesome the fact that they actually that's such a creative design choice to have real braille on the box considering that daredevil is blind for anyone who doesn't know uh red is my favorite color so i'm gonna be drawn to this box right off the bat looks great now while i do love the cover of the box i do not tend to like these style of boxes I'm not a big fan uh this can tear easily whenever i try to take the figure out of the box it can tear easily right here i've had a tear I've had to figure, look, it's already starting to tear right there on the corner. So yeah, I just, I don't like this type of packaging. I prefer like the ones where you just take that cover off and then you have the figure. It just, this feels too like other toys, I guess. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. So here's a first look at the Daredevil Netflix version figure right in the box. All right, here we have all the accessories for the Daredevil figure, starting off with the interchangeable mouthpiece here. So this is just a neutral mouth. Uh, you got stubble and like details and, you know, looks good, skin texture and all that stuff. And uh, just a standard kind of snap in. What you do is you take this off, the mask part off, and you can exchange this mouthpiece for this mouthpiece. Then you just snap it back on there. Like so. And it looks pretty seamless. You can't even really tell. So the other mouthpiece is pretty cool. I like that they included that. It's like more of a intense look with blood and all that stuff. Like he's been in the fight. Journal and pumping. It looks great. Um pretty real the teeth and all and so then you also have his accessories which is uh, i don't even know if you i have no i'm trying to think of what you call this and it's not coming to my mind uh, but it's cool that they have you know the version where he had the wire in between it so that's pretty cool and this is actually a wire this isn't a string it feels like a wire at least to me uh, so it's cool they actually made that a real wire. And you have a lot of texture details, you know, on the weapon itself. And the paint work makes it look like it's made of metal, which is great. You have the long, uh, I'll just call it stick. You have the long stick here. And then you have the stick as if it were taken apart. Now, I do think it's strange because with the Darth Maul, they made it to where his lightsaber could come apart and peg back in. I'm surprised they didn't do that for this one. But, I mean, it's still really cool. And I guess that probably would have made this part look fake when it comes apart. So I don't have a problem with it. I think it looks great. It's got a nice metallic look and the right color palette and the right texture, 3D, all that stuff. And then you have all the different hands, which you have two standard Hot Toys fist hands. And yeah, looks like the gloves. I mean, you got glove texture, on both sides just different like an open hand and then kind of a i don't even know what you call that hand like had to grab something i guess and then you have hands where he can hold his weapons in them and then you have the stand which is really awesome i wish hot toys would include more 3d diorama stand bases like this I mean, look at that, you have glass shards on the, the uh, road or sidewalk here, and then you have broken brick pieces, nicely painted, really nicely weathered, broken pipes and all that stuff. This looks great. I don't know why Hot Toys doesn't do more of this stuff, because I think 
a lot of people say they want it and from what I can tell so and I think more people would love this stuff like with Spider-Man figures or whatever the other figures there might be and they do do to some diorama pieces but I just wish they had more stuff like this this is great this I'm not really sure what it's for it's an extra block piece I actually I think you're supposed to put this oh yeah there's a drain drainage here on the sidewalk too I think you're supposed to put this on top here so then you can take the stand and have it set up on the same level as the stand to match the concrete road or sidewalk, whatever this is, texture. And the stand itself is cool. It's got a metal plate, which you know I love. Uh, the standard stand here. And yeah, you got some actual texture on this. It's not just a printed on thing. You have a puddle, which is smooth, and you have the sidewalk or road, which is rough. So that's kind of cool. Slightly 3D, you know, slight indention for the puddle here and all the others. So that's great. I like that, the shine and everything. Just standard base plate. And onto the figure himself. And here we have the full Daredevil figure himself. Um, so starting off with the head, you have a lot of detail. Um, it looks just like it does in the show, basically. Um, this isn't real fabric. This is sculpted plastic right here for this part. And then you have plastic all right here. The horns are actually kind of sharp. The really cool thing that I like is the fact that the eyes are actually see-through. They're translucent. So that's really cool that they're able to do that. I don't know if you can see sculpted eyes under there or not. Hard to tell. But it is cool that they actually made that translucent. And then uh, moving down, we have a lot of texturing work. Uh, for the chest and shoulders, you got multi-layer texturing work with the pads that are glued on there, kind of with that new technique that Hot Toys uses. Uh, yeah, all nicely textured. This isn't 2D. This is like 3D texturing all right here. The color is really nice. Uh, the color looks good. So that's how it looked in the show. And then you have multi-layered Kevlar looking padding here. Multi-layered. And then you have the belt, which is attached to all of this, not separate. Continues on the back, and you have all the patterns. You got like an elbow-like pad here. You got rubber mixed media attached to the fabric here for the wrist. And plastic hands for the gloves there. Um, continuing downward, kind of just the same style. And I'm just now noticing, unfortunately, this has come unglued, so I'm going to have to glue that back. That really, that sucks. Um, but it's cool. I love how it's all 3D. And then this is plastic, which is attached to the fabric pieces, which feels like a rubbery plastic material. And then you have this, which is also attached. Now, normally, Hot Toys wouldn't attach these straps, you know, like the new Goblin figure, this would be a separate piece, but... I think for the newer figures, they actually do attach them. Right? Same with the knee pads and all that stuff. This is fabric all down here. And then the boots are plastic. They're split cut boot design, which is great because you can literally move in and every which way. But when you have certain poses, it looks fake because, you know, there's obviously a gap there. So you just have to be just mindful of that. You know? And you actually have some nice weathering and texture on the boots on the bottom of them, so that's great. Um, do I wish these were real stream? Yeah, but it still looks real, so I'm not going to say it looks fake or anything. And so for this holster piece right here, you can take both of these uh, and put them like so. I'd probably put them in like this. I believe that's how they're supposed to go. They're very hard to get in. Um, holster is a tight squeeze to get these to go and then you can get on like at whatever level you would like them to be it's got that nice metallic shine that makes it look real so articulation starting with the mask head sculpt so it's kind of stiff actually uh, you can move the head up about that far and down about that much sideways that much. And I'm not joking, like you really can't move it any more than that. A little bit more this way. And of course 360, but really stiff actually. Because the neck is not fabric. There's no it's all this plastic sculpting. 
So a lot of complaints people probably have about this figure is the lack of flexibility because this rubbery suit material is very thick, it feels like, padding and all that stuff. So all that stuff limits what you can do with posing, unfortunately. So you can only go that far with the shoulder, otherwise you'll probably break it. At least I don't want to go that far. And same with, it's really kind of, yeah, you can't go too far going forward with the shoulder. That is as far as this will push. And then backwards, only about that far. So the fabric really limits it. And then the actually the elbow can go pretty far, double jointed. Surprising, I'm actually surprised about that. And then it can only go back that far. The chest and stomach, good luck with that because yeah, this is there's just all this padding and layers, you really can't pose that much. So let's see, you can go forward about not really at all, maybe just a tiny bit, but it probably won't stay. And you can go back a little bit too, but not much. You can twist ever so slightly, but not that much. Probably won't hold the pose much farther than that. And in terms of the uh, hips area, you uh, can push them almost 90 degrees, but not quite. This fabric bunches up. And backwards, not very much. The knees, you're double jointed. And you can only go back about that far and forward only that far. Split cut boot design gives you a lot of flexibility, but it exposes the joints. So just be mindful of that, depending on how realistic you want it to look. And yeah, so you can really move the feet a lot. I like split cut boot designs, but at the same time, I feel like it exposes the joints. So if only there was a way to make it more like a fabric or some type of something that can do to not have that happen as much, then that would be great. But, um, yeah, I have to say a lot of complaints or some complaints I've heard about this figure is the lack of articulation and flexibility. And I have to agree, it's accurate to the show and I love that. I love how it's multi-layered. I love the padding right here. All of this mixed media stuff is great because it's all accurate and it looks great and it feels awesome. I mean, the, it just feels real. It feels like the costume. But uh, yeah, a, at the sacrifice of low articulation, low flexibility, I don't know. So it's no Spider-Man figure, but so that's, I mean, it's kind of a downside. It's understandable. I just wish there was maybe some way to make this figure more flexible, if there even is one. Um, but So in terms of what I think of this figure overall, I... I like this character a lot. I love the Netflix series of Daredevil. Um, seasons one, one and two are the ones I saw. I watched part of season three. Um, I like this character. I think it's a really cool, darker version of a Marvel character. So I felt like I had to get this because I love the show so much. And um, I think this figure, in terms of how accurate the costume is and the, you know, the helmet and the mask head sculpt and all that stuff, as far as how accurate that is to the show, yeah, I would say it's pretty spot on, like no complaints there. It's unfortunately that that part of the costume is starting to come off in terms of the glue. You know, that might be a downside that maybe later on some of the pieces might start coming off. The other downsides of this figure is I'm really disappointed in the lack of accessories. I feel like, you know, I really feel like they could have included more uh, considering how much how many different things he interacted with in the show. You know, the most important accessory that Hot Toys didn't include, which I don't understand why, unless there's legal reason, is it didn't have an unmasked head sculpt. You know, like why? There were times in the show, a lot of times, where he didn't have his helmet on, his mask on, so they could have had a Charlie Cox unmasked head sculpt, and that would have been great to show Matt Murdock, you know, when he's not wearing his mask. Uh, they could have included the glasses. They could have included the walking stick that he used. I just don't understand, other than maybe legal reasons for the unmasked head sculpt, why, did they, why they didn't have that. Then when they include unmasked head sculpts with a lot of other characters, I feel like there could have been an accessory like the chain, because there's a scene in the show where Daredevil is chained up by Punisher, and they use the chain in combat. Like, why didn't they use the chain? That would have been so easy and simple to include. Uh, they could have included the gun that was duct taped in his hand when he was fighting the Punisher. That would have been amazing. That would have been a great hand accessory to have the duct tape with the revolver stuck in his hand. Maybe you could have made the revolver removable or something. You know, and, and the fact that they released a Punisher figure too and they didn't include that as an accessory with this one, 
I just feel like that they kind of missed out. That would have been great. That would have been so cool. As far as any other accessories, I don't know. If I were to go above and beyond and go crazy with this, I would say have a two-pack and have this Daredevil full costume and then have Matt Murdock with his normal lawyer outfit, his suit, his tailor suit and all that, and a few accessories like uh, whatever else he had when he was a lawyer. Like, that would be really cool. But then again, maybe the show wasn't popular enough to justify something like that. I would buy it. I think that would be amazing. But yeah, in terms of any other accessories, I can't really think of anything else. The biggest one that's the biggest disappointment for me is just not having an unmasked head sculpt. Yeah, that's just really disappointing. But everything else, um, well, actually, the other, the other unfortunate thing about this figure, which I don't know how hard it is to do or how hard it is to control, is the articulation, the flexibility. You can't really get there. You're very limited on the posing you can do because the costume has a thickness to it that limits the shoulders, the chest and stomach, the waist and the knees. Well, not the knees, but like the hips. So you really can't get too much, too many poses from this, unfortunately. Um, I get it. The costume kind of is designed that way in the show, so you don't really have much of a choice if you want to make it accurate and look good. So, I mean, if it looks good, if it's at the sake of sacrificing how good it looks to get better articulation, then I don't know, I'm kind of iffy on that. But if there were ways to somehow make it more flexible by doing different materials or different techniques to the costume design for this figure, then that would have been, I think that would have been a little bit better, you know, in terms of, because a lot of people, like I've heard people complain about this figure because of a lack of articulation. So the positives of this figure, I think the head sculpt is spot on for just having the nose down. It looks like the actor uh, looks detailed, looks real. I like how they included multiple versions of his weapon, which I still can't remember the name of for the life of me. So please comment below, let me know. I should know what it's called. I just, it's not coming to me right now. But I'm glad they included the long version of the weapon when it's put together, the version when it's taken apart, and then the version with the wire. I think that's so cool. I love the stand. I love how they include a 3D well-painted diorama style brick and sidewalk stand with glass. I wish they included more stuff like that with other figures. The other big positive, the biggest one for me, is the costume just looks amazing. The texturing work, the mixed media, the multi-laying, the 3D, the padding, the foam parts, all of that is great. Spot on, color palette, everything looks amazing. Uh, this is a great figure. It looks great in hand. I, don't, I do not regret buying this figure. I think I'm glad that I picked it up because... Is such a rare figure now who knows if they'll ever make this again considering how popular daredevil is go going now with being in no way home this figure could just keep going up in price who knows so i'm glad i got it before no way home came out yeah i mean that's all i can really think of i think it's a great figure i mean it's not really in my top five i would say honestly because the flexibility that to me really it's a big negative for me so i just kind of keep them in just this you know, okay pose, I guess. So that kind of knocks it out of the top five for me of all, can that's compared to all the figures I have. So yeah, I mean, it's not like, and it's not like it's my favorite character of all time either. So that's probably another reason, but I still like this figure and I like the show. So that's why I got it. I wish I had the Punisher figure. Hopefully someday I can get that one later. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Pros and cons. I want to hear your opinion. And that'd be all until next time.